Dr. Dewhurst had written to me and just said that you'd been getting a bit more breathless yeah, again. Have, when, yeah. when did that start? Uh, about a year past October. It was, I was to go to the, the clinic up in PRI in, just before Christmas, and I was breathless then. Right. So I only move about then. Okay, and has I've it been, been getting breath- worse since then? It's been, yeah. it's been getting worse. I mean, if I get myself ready for going in, in, out and going in the car, I'm going to sit for a wee while before okay. I see anything. Okay. I'm so breathless. Okay. So without the car, how far can you, how far can you get just, just with your gate. stick? Really, just to the just gate? About, just about across the road here, across the hall of that. Okay. Mm-hmm. And what about stairs? Can you manage okay. stairs? I, when I go to, up the stairs, I've got to sit and I have a book and I read a couple of pages of my book before I do anything at all. That's a, that's a good idea, actually. So the balloon we're going to use to stretch the valve, <coughs> it'll go up from the vein at the top of your leg, up through to the other side of the heart, mm-hmm. into the mitral valve and then we'll stretch the valve by inflating mm-hmm. the balloon in the valve. We plan to do that several times, three or four times or so. To really get the thing right. Well, we're hoping that'll open up your valve and uh, let the blood flow more freely, and that should translate into you being less breathless and able to do a bit more exercise. That's what we're hoping for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's not going to be a dramatic cure like it was when you had the valve replacement, but we hope that it'll make you considerably better. That's what we're hoping. Yeah, it'll, make it, it'll help it anyway. That's what we hope. Mm -hmm. There is a small risk uh, with procedures like this. Um, It's a fairly (laughs) major heart procedure, and there is a risk of complications. The risk of any complication is quite small. Any operation is a risk. There is a risk, um, and it's probably the risk of any complication is probably about around 1 in 20. Mm -hmm. And the risk of a serious complication Mm -hmm. could include a stroke or um, making the valve leak worse. the risk of anything, or a heart attack, the risk of anything like that is probably only around one or two in a hundred, no, so it's very a small. Or a heart attack, I know, like I know, I know. But these things are rare. We just have to is, uh, warn you about the possibility, but these things are yeah. fortunately unusual with this. Mm-hmm. So most people come through this fine, and we hope when you wake up you'll be, um, you'll be feeling When you go and do dark things after the operation, that's it. Then, um, then the, the other thing to warn you is you might not notice the improvement immediately. So we have to give it a few weeks just to see how you are after this procedure. Yeah. And we'll get another scan done in Perth, and that will show um, what improvement you've got. Mm-hmm. Okay. That would be all right, yeah. Is there anything? We need to get you to sign a form to consent for this, but is there anything you want to ask me about it before? I don't think so, because I've had so much shared about it, you know, I think. And we've sent you some written stuff yes. about it as mm-hmm. well, so you've, you've known about mm-hmm. all of this. Okay. So we're just going to get Mr. McLaughlin to sign up for this now. Then. Sign the form. Okay? Yeah, fine. When you come mm-hmm. along, we'll put the little scratch in the back of your hand. Yes, yeah, so you, she you, couldn't get one in today. That, that's right, so she asked yeah. me if, if I could do it. But I should. All right. They've got I, lumps. I can see some nice veins there. We'll yeah. find somewhere to this put it. This is the best arm yeah. anyway. You're we'll not find somewhere to put it. So we'll do that. We'll connect you up to lots of monitors, lots of sticky things and a blood pressure cuff and things. Mm-hmm. And then we'll lie you down on the bed. I'll give you some oxygen to breathe. Mm-hmm. And when your lungs are full of oxygen, I'll switch on the anaesthetic which goes into your drift, yeah. and you go nice and gently off to sleep. I'll be chatting to you, and you just drift nice and gently off to sleep. Mm-hmm. While you're sleeping, we'll do lots of things to you. Yeah, we'll, that what I won't know. You won't know <laughs> anything about them. That we'll do the be. echo of your heart, yeah. uh, that Dr. Northridge has probably mentioned to you, mm-hmm. uh, and then they'll do the procedure so you from your groin. Uh, so it'll I've take, had that several times. You'll have had that a few times, yeah. Uh, when they're finished doing the procedure, I'll switch off the anaesthetic, we'll put you on your bed, and you'll wake up sitting up in your bed with an ordinary oxygen mask on. Mm-hmm. And we'll keep you in the little recovery room for, for 20 or 30 minutes, and then we'll get you back up to yeah. the, the day case ward. Yes, that's fine. And you should feel pretty good. It's not a sore operation, because there's no cutting or anything. Yeah. If it is a bit nippy, then paracetamol yeah. or something should that's be fine. comfortable. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> yeah. so, something that would be okay with paracetamol, or, or something similar. You won't need any strong painkillers. Well, will pass the day, wouldn't you? I'll pass the day a little bit. <laughs> so, is that okay? Yes. Is there anything you want to know or well, anything no. that you're especially uh, worried about? I think about? everything has been explained to me anyway. Okay, good.